In this edition of Hot Issues, we delve into the December 7th elections and the political dynamics shaping the race. In recent years, the northern regions have become a significant battleground with both major political parties vying for dominance. The NDC, traditionally strong in the north, faces the challenge of reclaiming lost grounds. But how will the NDC strategize to win back key constituencies and what role will members of parliament from the north play? in shaping the party's fortunes. I am Kevin Amano, and I sit with a man who deeply understands the political landscape in the North, which has made him a powerfully influential voice in Northern politics. We will explore the NDC's chances of reclaiming their influence and what to expect from the elections. My guest is Member of Parliament for Tamale South and former Minority Leader, Haruna Idrisu. You're welcome to Hot Issues, Honourable. Kemeni, thank you very much for the opportunity. Your party, the NDC, has been at odds with the Electoral Commission over the integrity of the voter roll. The EC has told you that they are doing their best to ensure that they produce a robust and credible electoral. Why is that not enough? Uh, every student of uh, political science is tried knowledge that a credible voter register is a sine qua non to the conduct of free, fair, credible elections. The NDC have had cause to be worried and concerned about the integrity and the state of Ghana's electoral rule and voter register, which will be used for purposes of the extraordinary 7th December presidential and parliamentary elections. Uh -huh. Evidence abound. I mean, I just got back this afternoon from Tamale where in my own constituency, the Tamale South constituency, we have had some mystery mm. of illegal voter transfer to Pusiga constituency. How did that happen? Who supervised it? Who authorized it? In liquid who? With officials of the electoral uh, The EC has admitted so to that one. It is not enough to admit. I hope that you are watching CNN today. Just go to the US, either in Alaska or in Arizona today. There's correction of about 100,000 votes on an electoral roll in America. So what is this holier than thou feeling or persona that the chairperson of the electoral commission seem to be manifesting or want to manifest? My strongest view, an electoral commission is only relevant to the extent that it serves the Ghanaian electorate and political parties well. You are irrelevant if you cannot serve the citizens well. Today, we all cherish our peace. We want to preserve our peace. We want to preserve the integrity of the election, safeguard mm -hmm. our democracy. We are celebrating 30 years of it. We could have done better. We do not want acts or conduct, omissions or commissions, that will soil the outcome of the December 7th presidential and uh, parliamentary elections that can spell doom for the peace and tranquility of the Ghana we love and the Ghana we so cherish. So don't take these things uh, lightly, lightly and just say that the NDC is not the NDC. It's civil society, the National Democratic uh, Congress, observers of the political landscape are simply saying that the electoral register is muggy Correct it. But the NDC Accept has, it. you know, has led to... the charge. Yes. And the Electoral Commission has said that... Because it's the most potent and resilient opposition party today, which is ready to form I mean, no, no, no doubt about that, right? Yes. But the Electoral Commission has said, look, you have mentioned some figures. We do not know those figures, mm -hmm. despite, you know, admitting to the Pusiga, uh, you know, anomaly. Not just Pusiga, it's widespread. But, but wh why won't you give them the evidence? Uh, they have the evidence. After all, they have when I have to manipulate the record. So if you manipulate a document and you pretend that somebody should say a uh, record, you share what record, what do you have? You are supposed to give provisional voter register to the political parties. And it's a clever way. 
that the Electoral Commission could deal with this matter is to have said that it's provisional. Give me an opportunity to improve and correct it. But a denier will not be accepted today. It will not be accepted tomorrow. Well, they denied, but they also said that's the purpose of the exhibition process. Then that's process. not a denier. They admit. But what is it about transparency? You see, have you seen somebody running in a market who hasn't stolen? You, in a market, you see somebody at a or at a, it was a problem. running in the midst of people. It means there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. Why are you running? Let the electoral commission live up to its calling as an independent commission, independent of government, independent of political manipulation, including the ruling New Patriotic Party. And that the electoral commission should not be seen conniving with actors who have interests in safeguarding their stay or prolonging their stay in power. That is not acceptable and that will be resisted by not just the NDC but by Ghanaians and those who cherish and love our democracy. Uh, on the subject of evidence, one of the things <laughs> the Electoral Commission has said is that your party uh, during the presentation uh, you know, indicated that some 50,000 dead people were still on the electoral roll. Uh, do you know how your party were, was able to identify those oh, dead people? Uh, we do have a director of elections, Dr. Omani Buama, who is working with the team. They are very diligent at what they are doing mm -hmm. because they have every duty to preserve the sovereign will of the Ghanaian people, which will manifest in a vote for change. Ghanaians want change, and Ghanaians will vote for change. That is what the MPP is trying to resist, working in court with the Electoral Commission, as we suspect. Now, you keep mentioning evidence. I have given you Tamales half evidence. That's where I come from. That's why I vote. Share yours. Others to have shared theirs. Mm -hmm. Their register is not clean. And if it is not clean, it cannot guarantee a free, credible election. Period. And there can be chaos. I elaborate again the nature of the anomaly in Tamales house. The nature of it, we found some 38 to 54 persons from Tamale South mm -hmm. in the Jakara Hill area. We've had it... Uh, even in San Nargo and Tamale North, we followed up some evidence where those persons, uh, innocent women, some young person came for their voter ID card. Mm -hmm. Then when we were doing our checks, we noticed that the block of those names were no longer in Tamale South. They were now in the Pusiga constituency. How did that happen? How, how, how did that happen? So in Tamale South, the MPP is not strong as you are aware. I mean, I, I, I win virtually in every polling station in Tamale staff. I'm still uh, very strong and determined to give uh, Excellency John Dramani Mahama a 90,000 vote uh, mark. I'm dedicated, committed, and working with the electorate in Tamale South to uh, marshal out the vote on 7th uh, December. So what they have chosen to do, and get it right, the idea is that on election day, the Electoral Commission is going to create a certain confusion at polling stations and in the minds of persons. If you go to a polling ba station... Based on the electoral challenges? Yes, based on the uh, irregularities that mm -hmm. we've determined. Let me just explain. If you go to Tamale South, maybe you vote at Tahadip, Tahazip, and you are told that, oh, your name is no longer in Tahazip, go to Pusiga. Will you cast your vote that day? you are likely to go home. Mm -hmm. So in NDC stronghold, this is a ploy to undermine and weaken the NDC and weaken its strength and frustrate its voters. That is what the national chairman and national leadership of the party, together with regional and community executives, are fighting. And I'm saying that I don't want to expand Mm. Because I haven't been to other consensus, I haven't looked at right, the But the Electoral stuff. Commission says they are referee in the election. They have and no I interest say at all. Another referee in the United States, go, uh, just go on to CNN. I'm sure your newsman should help you. There's correction of an electoral role in Arizona or, yes, I think Arizona today. 100, they are correcting it. Mm -hmm. But why can't Ghana's Electoral Commission be transparent? What's the difficulty? Show right. openness, show transparency. Your party said that, you know, they should open themselves out, up to an independent forensic audit. Independent they, uh, technical uh, audit for verification. Indeed. And they then have, they have said no. They do not need yeah, that but I understand point. from what uh, Franklin Kujo have published and have read. Jean Mensa, then working for civil society at the Institute of Economic uh, Affairs, now chairperson, asked for an independent audit. Today, she can't stand for same 
Where is principle? Where is value? So she lacks principle. If 10 years ago or 9 years ago, you advocated for something, there's an opportunity to do it. Do it. Mm. If you are strong enough and not being uh, uh, an object of manipulation by some interested uh, political actor somewhere. I'm disappointed in her. I'm disappointed in the commission. I've worked with the electoral commission as minority leader. I largely together with the Honorable Osei Chim as I chaired the electoral commission and his budget. Uh -huh. So I know what goes on within the electoral commission. I give you an example. They have 75,000 biometric devices. Their devices must have adapters and batteries ready for 7 December. We don't want a situation on 7 December where we are told that go manual mm -hmm. because the batteries are down, they are weak, they are not potent. From my sources, she's only attempting to procure two to 5,000 batteries. How can that be adequate and sufficient for 75,000 biometric devices? Is that possible? So, Jean Mensa, don't throw our beloved country, Ghana, into chaos, mm. into situations that you yourself will shadow want to run away from. I think, I think she must just do things right. She's not the first person to chair the Electoral Commission. We've seen Dr. Farajan, we've seen uh, Charlotte Osei. And you yourself in 2015 said that it was possible, it was feasible, uh -huh. to have an independent technical audit. That is all the NDC is asking for. So, and perhaps, in any case, perhaps ask, that ask history. the Electoral Commission the same mm -hmm. question. Why can't they undertake an audit? And, and what's we will. the excuse? And we will. Ask but, them, what's the excuse? We will. Because, one of, again, <laughs> it, you know, based on what they have said so far, they say that, <laughs> look, they have the ability to be able to clean the register themselves. They are already dealing with some of the issues that you have mentioned. They also say that they have the liveliness feature. So it means that if you go there and, you know, you, your face is not what is already captured in the bio data, there is no way oh. that... Uh, Are you following you can... them properly? I even heard them uh, in days past. They said, oh, there will be face recognition. Yes, that, that's the liveliness feature. Uh, and isn't it? Uh, that's what they say. Have you subjected it to any IT significant test? What do you think about that? All is right. it a good effort to... Don't forget, I'm former minister for communication. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Facial recognition mm -hmm. as integral to the cards that have been issued, Ghanaian voters. I'm not too sure about it. I see. I'm not too sure about uh, it. The communications director of the NPP, Richard Ahiagwa, says if you are so sure that you need or, you know, the electoral rule requires an independent audit, go to court. Why are they interested that? in court? Maybe they think that they have... Uh, compromise the neutrality and impartiality of the court. They are not to dictate to the NDC what to do anyway. Uh -huh. how, does, how does your opponent tell you what to do? Have you heard that before? Is court an option at all, at any point, I if the EC decides the not to? The MPP cannot dictate to the NDC what to do. Simple. What will the, what they will, are not to dictate to us. It simply won't work. We won't take it. What will, what will the NDC do in the event the Electoral Commission does not subject itself to this audit? Don't worry. Uh, coming events, they cast their shadows. What shadow is, is it casting right I now? I don't know. You coming events, they cast their shadows. I have said that we we'll hold Jean Mensah, uh -huh. chairperson of the Electoral Commission, solely responsible should anything happen to Ghana's uh, democracy uh, by fracturing its process and fracturing the legitimacy of the outcome of that process, we we'll hold her responsible. Would you engage any further with the Electoral Commission on this issue? The party's leadership engages with them at the level of IPAC, which, self, which itself is persuasive. I'm sure they will continue to. But I think that I should commend the national leadership of the party together with the rank and file of the party for massive, massive show of uh, solidarity and support yesterday across the country to protest and demand a credible, clean voter register mm -hmm. for the purpose of the conduct of the December 7th presidential and parliamentary election. We are very certain and uh, profoundly optimistic that John mm -hmm. Mahama will win a free, fair, credible election. We are very optimistic about that. I want to talk about your campaign, uh, <laughs> Which of the campaign to be retained in Tamale South. <laughs> oh, no, no, that, there's no debate about it. There's no debate. <laughs> all I need is life. Why do you think there's no debate all about I, it? All I need is life and good health. And to his grace, I'll be honored with re-election as member of uh, parliament. What I'm now striving to do is to garner at least 90,000 or more for President uh -huh. uh, Mahama 
parliamentary, I don't need as much to win, uh, but uh, the greater Tamale would uh, mean a lot more for Excellency John Dramani Mahama. We need to humble Dr. Mahmoud Bawia in the greater Tamale and carry the rest of uh, Northern Region along. Uh -huh. We have 18 seats. Our worst performance should be some 14 seats. We should be able to recapture Karaga, Myang, Sanguli, uh, Zabzogo, Tolling, Nantong. A few of them, there is still competitiveness of a race, I admit it. But some, uh, we have currently have nine. We can safeguard and protect the nine. Some three to five are almost uh, 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 in the party's uh, bosom, subject to what happens on December 7th and between now and December 7th. Uh, Tamales have, uh, uh, the NDC remains uh, dominant. Mm -hmm. I, I still remain uh, humbly popular. Uh, I see. Among but the I mean, what, what would you say your legacy is in Tamale South? Oh, I've contributed immensely into changing uh, livelihoods of many uh, people, whether women or youth. I admit that unemployment is still unacceptably high. There are many young people and uh, young women who are striving uh, for bread and uh, uh, struggle, uh, uh, like many other Ghanaians, with the unprecedented uh, hardship and suffering uh, that Nana Dankwa and uh, Dr. Bangwe have unleashed on every Ghanaian. I think that they should admit that it's a failed government mm. uh, and failed in the sense that there's no honor or respect even in uh, being uh, an elite at the political level. Uh, what Ghanaians are saying that you politicians have no honor. And is that if you saw a Dr. Mahmoud Baumia argue on platform as cheap and easy as it was, oh, I'll arrest the depreciation of the city. He thought that arresting the depreciation of the city was like stopping a trotter between Wulugu and, <laughs> and Nasia. That's not so. Today you have uh, the city, which was at four cities now, at 16 cities. Mm -hmm. What that means for the cost of doing business, what that means for cost of living, is one of a rejection of a failed government. I mean, cost of living have ballooned. Uh, many Ghanaians are struggling to make a living. Businesses are struggling with high cost of doing uh, business. Mm -hmm. uh, even just on my way here, I just picked up uh, Intel that uh, government is maneuvering to sell electricity company of Ghana. Mm. And after failing with PDS, now you want to put it on sale, barely 90 days of uh, life of your administration. We will resist it, we'll protest it. Really? They are Just planning on my to way sell ECG? They are planning. I've seen a letter fly from the PURC to ECG and other, and there's a planned sale of the electricity company of Ghana. Let government come out and deny it, hmm. but it will not happen. John Dramani Mahama will come and stop it and reset Ghana, reset the economy, reset our state institutions that are performing so badly and poorly. Right, but opposition in your constituency say that it's time for you to go after 20 <laughs> years, uh, you know, as MP. <laughs> laughable. Laughable. Why laughable. so? They say you haven't done much for them apart from enrich yourself. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, MP ship and rich people know uh, is not true. I have improved livelihood, road infrastructure, a lot of it have been done. There are many which are outstanding like Dungu, Bambaya, Kapaile, and uh, between To and then Tua, Koton, Le Kudula. Like many other MPs, everybody is struggling to get the desired road infrastructure mm -hmm. fixed in their area. In terms of school infrastructure, even uh, hospital cheap compounds, I've built more cheap compounds than the Tamale Assembly combined. So you can't say that it's a 20 years of uh, non-performance or poor performance. Mm -hmm. I've improved quality of life. I've improved quality of uh, delivery of healthcare services in the Tamale South and Tamale generally with my contribution to healthcare. I've assisted a number of farmers to farm. I've done that consistently over a 10, 20 year period. I've assisted women in the Tamale South constituency with a microcredit, which has run for years. Uh, I should say that I have to pay respect to my manager, uh, Atik, who passed on very, very recently, made us so rest in peace. He's run the scheme on my right. uh, behalf. So it's simply not true. There is no contest or competition in Tamale South. 
the NDC is far, far ahead of the uh, uh, MPP the candidate. Party. I'm sure my, my constituency chairman was looking for the MPP candidate so that they would debate at their level. And then you get the matter settled. Like I see. We look forward to level. that. When we return from this break, we'll talk about the battle for the <laughs> north, but we'll also focus slightly on the Tamale South constituency and how it could mirror its support for the uh, NDC flag bearer. Don't go away. My guest on the program today is Tamale South MP and former minority leader. Haruna Idrisu. Again, thank you so much for sitting with us on the program. Uh, I want to talk a bit about Tamale South before we look at the bigger picture of northern Ghana. Um, in the last election, we see uh, that it would appear that at least 10,000 people who voted for you didn't vote for your flag bearer. And uh, you're promising 90,000 votes for your flag bearer at this time. Even, even that is part of the electoral fraud. I'm still working out the numbers. I see you reading 57,000 when you should read 67,000. I see. The difference between uh, John Dramani, Mahama, and Haruna Idrisu was just 69,000, 67,000, not 57,000 as you read. Mm. So you know, that's why we said that Jim Mensa manipulated the 2020 elections and change the outcome. And one of the important things, even as we discuss illegal transfer of vote, Amano, you need to appreciate that transfer of vote is regulated by law, CI 127. Is the Electoral Commission behaving in a manner which is consistent with the law that affects these processes? Transfer of vote, special voting. We've seen significant numbers in terms of security agents who want to vote. The fear is that some of them may vote on special voting day uh -huh. and still find their way to polling stations and go and vote. So all these are questions the NDC elections department are raising. And we desire credible, convincing answers from the Electoral Commission. Don't bother yourself too much with the Tamale South. Uh, it is an NDC constituency. It's a given. It remains is a given. I only need to live and have good health. I'll be sworn in on 7 January as member of parliament for Tamale South. Uh -huh. I would win with a respectable margin, both uh, presidential and uh, parliamentary. I'm fully in control. I'm in charge. I see. I mean... I, with my executive and thanks to the electorate. Yeah, I, I, and, and I see that also. That I have a high know, standard you're, you're in very, Tamale. You're very high, confident high, about high, that. High standard you know. in Tamale. I stand there. I mean, this this confidence could be, you know, trans trans um, translated yes. into a bit of, it's you know. It's not an exaggerated confidence. At all? Not at all. Not, at all. not in the least. If I don't need to go to Tamale now to win Tamale South, if I'm here, my electorate will give their seat <laughs> to me. They will support me to win. You think so? I don't need I mean, how would your electorate feel spending, hearing you say that's this? That's why I'm spending time assisting other members of parliament. In fact, I drove to Ejra at the weekend. From Ejra, I drove to Wa, then to Hamli, then back to Nadoli, back to Tamale, and back to Accra to help many of my colleagues. Uh, Dr. Titus Kior, the Lambosi said that we lost. Okay. And Dr. Suma. That is Alban Sumani, the speaker's own uh, constituency. And then you had Dr. Rashid Pelpo. They had to spend some time in Ejra to assure them that President John Dramani Mohammed's agric mechanization scheme, the headquarters will be in Ejra. Look, if we take Ejra much more seriously, invest more in agriculture, increase, increase the GDP spending mm -hmm. of agriculture, allow for mechanized farming in that area and allow farmers to have access to cheap uh, 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 equipment and machinery. Hydra, together with others, can feed the country. I want us to also look at the battle for the north because um, the NDC has always had the northern part of the country. We've seen a different trend uh, over the last election or two, particularly in the northeast. Um, what is the strategy to ensure that the people of the north return to what their voting pattern used to be? And you think that I'll come on TV and discuss strategy? Then I'm not a better or a good strategy. I don't discuss that. All do I know is that John Ramani Mahama will do well. 
in the five northern regions combined, Upper East, Upper West, fully secured, we should be able to win the Binduri seat back. I was there to support the young lawyer in that uh, area. In the Upper West region, where we just returned from, Lambusi, we lost, Nandong, we lost, Sisala, we lost, we are likely to win all eight seats and win all 15 seats in the, in the Upper East region. In Northern region, we have nine, the MPP have nine. We should be at our worst performance or least performance be some 14 seats. We should be able to get at least some five or more seats additional. Now, don't forget that throughout history, from 1993 to yesterday, the NDC have always won presidential, both in Upper East and Upper West. That's not going to change significant. So the battleground is now just three regions, Northern region, Upper East, and North East. Uh -huh. North East have been to Bunkuru, and I'm satisfied that the young Albert will win the Bunkuru seat. Nalirugu is more an inner NDC problem of Nalirugu versus Gambaga politics, the local geopolitics of that area, mm -hmm. and some matters of ego. But uh, Honorable Baba is on top of his game. I was in Nalirugu for a walk, and I'm confident that uh, President Mahama will beat Baumia in Nalirugu, both presidential and parliamentary uh, elections. Wale Wale, you've seen that uh, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia cannot even clean his own home. <laughs> He comes, he hears from Wale Wale, passing pay, I'm told. You see the crisis in Wale Wale, which is a consequence of electoral fraud. So don't rule out the things that the NDC is talking about. Mm. Even in Wale Wale, dead people found themselves voting in the MPP primary. So this is not a matter of speculation or the MPP, just, NDC just talking. It happened in Wale Wale. Why did the court rule for a rerun? And we may take advantage of the chaotic uh, situation, the internal rift and conflict between Larba and the young doctor, and we can have Wale Wale. Our performance has always been affected by passing pay Janga in that area coming to us next year. But generally in the Wale Wale area, President Mahama is still very, very popular, mm. even though that's uh, Dr. Mahmoud's Baumia's home uh, region. You also have uh, Northeast uh, region. They are declaring that all the seats there would be for John Mahama. We have some work we are doing in uh, Damangu. Mm -hmm. I passed through Damangu, but I didn't stop this time. But I meet every time with a member of parliament uh, contesting in right. that particular area. Salga North should come back to the NDC, both presidential and uh, parliamentary. So overall, in the five regions, John Dramani Mahama should prevail but, I mean, and win against What, what is Mahmoud in Mahmoud. the NDC's manifesto for the people of the North? <laughs> a lot. Targeted at the people <laughs> Agri of the North. Investment in agriculture sector. And don't forget, for instance, if you take Upper East, the biggest ever investment in irrigation, the Tamni Dam, was done under John Dramani Mahama and the NDC. That will be expanded. There are some promises to build irrigation infrastructure in some parts of the Upper East and Upper West uh, region, through North East, through Pagaza Asabari uh -huh. in the Northern uh, region. And then don't forget the 24-hour economy. It does provide an opportunity to drive growth, expand the economy, and create prosperity and opportunity for many Ghanaians. Uh, President Mahama was speaking about unemployment being a ticking time bomb. We need to watch it. It's happened in many other Develop and developing countries that uh, uh, the explosion may not be the failure of your electoral commission, but failure of government to address the concerns of citizens, which is their livelihood. And unemployment, which was around 16, 17, which was less than that. Today I'm told that unemployment is over 14 percent under the MPP. Yet yeah, they say you should hail them, clap for them when they have brought it high. Inflation. At the time the NDC left office in 2016, election inflation was not 20 percent. We saw it go up to 54 percent, now down to 23 percent. Yet they say hail them and clap for them. And then you just simply break down. When you hear Dr. Baumia say that I want to upgrade Ghana, upgrade hardship. Upgrade cost of living, upgrade electricity and school fees? No, he got it wrong. What, what President Mama and the NDC is saying is to reset Ghana. And I hope that many of you in the media must pay attention. The poor performance and failed performance of the MPP is not just manifesting in the economy, mm -hmm. where you have a colossal debt, to borrow the words of Nana Adudanko Akufo, the president of the republic, a debt you inherited at $120 billion, today is $745 billion. To whom much is given, much is to be expected. 
they ought to be telling Ghanaians that with this huge money, including the Bank of Ghana printing of over 50, 80 billion, uh -huh. this is what we have done with the money. You have something to show for it? 745 billion debt? Uh -huh. No. President Mahama and NDC want 20 billion. Look at the gap. They, but, ought, but you see, they ought to have done more. They have not been able to arrest inflation. Uh, as I said, cost of uh, living, cost of goods and services. Sometimes when you open your car door, by the time but, you but close it, it, the price of a product will go up. But if up. inflation has come down quite a bit from, uh, what, from what it used to be, to 54 to uh, so uh, now. So you don't see a problem with it. Where was it before it got to 54? Well, well, I mean, where we, was we, it? We, I see, we where see a, a downward trend. What? There Don't was an we? upward trend. So speak to the upward trend. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And who must be responsible? And like Galam said, today you, the media, you are making the MPP walk away with the uh, uh, murder of people's livelihood in Is the name the of illegal Ghana. Yes. The people of Ghana have vested their trust mm -hmm. and faith in Nana Adudankwa Akufu Ado as president, supported by Baumia. They must be held solely liable and solely responsible for their destroyed livelihood arising out of their failure to fight Galamsey. Don't rope Mahama in. Don't rope the NDC in. We have no responsibility. You have given them a mandate. If I read the constitution well, I hope I get it right. Article 268, that about mm -hmm. every mineral resource, including water, is vested in the president. If it's not being managed well, the president must be held solely mm -hmm. liable and responsible. And he put his... So, Nana Akufuado, I said blame or failure of failing to manage Galamse. Who issues the licenses? You and a minister through you. Take responsibility. And, Take responsibility. And, and we know, we know I know it's a function of the growing unemployment in the mm -hmm. country, but it must be regulated and mining done responsibly. I'm told, and again, a challenge to the media, the amount of gold that leaves Ghana, what we account for at our port, and what is accounted for abroad, exceeds what is accounted for in our borders here. There's something wrong. That discrepancy, some media person must investigate it. Probably. I mean, but why do you Take think the government has really failed, if, despite the if president you, putting you have his a, job on the line? If you have a sense or a feeling that they haven't failed, I so wish no, no, I'm are. asking you why you think that the government has not been able to deal with this to the extent that... Yeah, because the they are dealing with their symptoms mm. and not their disease itself. They are scratching the surface. Uh, who has a license? Who are those by excavators? It's not the poor people who are in jail. They should look for the key actors and hold them responsible. Mm. That's why... You talk, the TUC, civil society is in arms against the uh, government. The continuous destruction of our, national, our natural environment must cease. It is affecting livelihood. Gold should not be a curse on Ghana. Indeed. While we're on the subject, subject the of gift Galamsey. of a natural resource, uh -huh. you don't want to make the best use of it. Even as you end foreign exchange, you heard when the MPP lined their manifesto, they said gold for oil will stabilize the city. Then why is the South African run suffering? <laughs> South Africa have more gold than you. Why is it suffering? Mm. If gold was to preserve the stability of a currency, the run will do better. Right. What, what would the you know, subject oh, you of illegal mining? That, uh, illegal mining, what's wrong with it? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> that is not what I was going to say. <laughs> but I'm saying while we're on the subject of illegal mining, uh -huh. we know that it is also uh, increasing, you know, the, the menace is rising strongly in mm -hmm. the northern part of the country, mm -hmm. uh, which is where your constituency is, which is where you're and my from. constituency, there is no mining. No, I, no I haven't said... <laughs> I, I, so I'm don't saying, bring it to Tamales. No, no, I if haven't said... illegal mining, go to where it is. Yes, Maybe absolutely. Maybe in Bulga and Bali area, they have seen some... Uh, activities uh, and i agree on. with you i, I haven't and said it's in tamale I, south i've only said I, that tamale I, south is in the north i drove between bamboy and a major community where was it in quanta they pointed that there was a major uh, mining uh, small scale mining there and the citizens are not happy because people have come from accra to take their kind of uh, gold uh, reserve so ownership is also important. I mean, but tell me how you feel about the menace rising. Responsible regulated mining is the answer. If a uh, government has to take uh, major decisions that safeguards the future of this country, government should not hesitate to do that. And I trust that uh, President Mahama 
upon hindsight, we'll be able to deal with many of these problems much more better, having sat through, observed uh, his own performance in government and the performance of this uh, failing administration in government. He, sh he should do better. I mean, and this, may not, this may not be in your constituency, but uh, as an influential MP in northern Ghana, do we see, you know, the MPs there take action before it becomes the situation we see in the South? I think I have repeatedly said that Ghana, Parliament of Ghana, is part of Ghana's problem. The poor exercise of oversight. These mining leases come to Parliament for ratification. What do we do? as members of parliament. What do we demand? Safeguards in protecting water bodies, in protecting the natural environment, safeguarding Ghana meeting the green requirements under climate change. The burden is on parliament. Arguably, because of our excessive partisanship, many of these referrals, if from, uh, they come from the president, it passes. Mm -hmm. So I've always said that uh, parliament should elevate itself above a clearing house for executive excesses. The executive does something wrong, bring it to parliament, you clean it up, you ratify it for them, it's wrong. Mm. So institutionally, we need to strengthen the oversight of parliament, which uh, the NDC manifesto promises. There will be major review of the constitution to make our institutions stronger. Have you heard of Cocoa Board lately? Have you heard of GMPC lately? Have you heard of Petroleum Commission lately? So beyond the destruction of the economy, Nana Dankwa and Dr. Mahmoud Baumia are killing Ghanaian institutions softly. You Many so. of our institutions. Take Cocoa Board. Ah, Cocoa, take money and go and buy and sell to you. can't go and buy and sell. That Cocoa Board cannot even borrow money. They went in for them, according to Bloomberg, the most costliest and the most expensive loan ever, 800 million US dollars. Mm -hmm. They have not even been able to get all of it. I hear they got part. The rest is still hanging somewhere. Now, because they can't borrow abroad, they've run to say that they'll borrow domestic. Which bank in Ghana will get the money for you? Well, well they, they, they have decided, it according, to, decided. Them, according you, to them. If you are not competitive or attractive abroad, say so. You think that's it what the is, true, If you are not attractive. The true reason. What is, is the true reason? This is, go back to Coco Boss' last borrowing. According to Bloomberg, not Haruna Idrisu, it was the costliest the most expensive ever borrowing by cocoa board in its history. The indebtedness of cocoa to the road sector is not less than 14 billion uh -huh. in non-core business. Why will you do that? Take money and buy cocoa. What is the state of PBC today? Produced by a company. Uh -huh. They owe many of the cocoa uh, uh, purchasing uh, companies, even uh, abroad. Uh, GMPs, have you heard of them lately? ECG, have you heard of them? Ghana Gas, have you heard of so, them? So on the we are a nation in crisis, right. as President Nanadu Dankwa himself admitted. So you have a president who comes and says, yes, there is an economic crisis. Just say that I have failed and give way. We will have elections in December. Whether he wants to be in Chibi or he wants to be somewhere else, which will drop uh, sooner. I will tell you. I see. Oh, you know, on the subject of parliamentary oversight, we ha had a hang parliament. I think that's Ghana's bane. That's Ghana's bane. No, 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 uh, hang on. I, I'm going uh, somewhere with uh, that. Uh, we had a hang parliament, uh, which yes. should have, you know, strengthened oversight. But if you are telling us what you are telling us that now, then it means we didn't benefit from a hang oh, parliament. We have, we have. At least we rejected their budget in 2021. Ejapa was rejected. We got Speaker Bagwin elected from a political party. We didn't form a government. There was a time they came to Parliament to borrow one billion. Uh, we allowed only two fifty. That's oversight. That has saved the country. Probably our debt situation would have been more distressful than it is today. Our debt is not sustainable. We are not hearing new vocabulary of uh, haircut, domestic debt, exchange, external debt. Exchange. Did you hear about that ten years back? That's a mess the way the economy is. Mm, but there's, there's there are some there are some saw, things that also came to Parliament. That we're able to get to the uh, no, and I'm saying yes, get to the stamp of parliament. I mean, if you have Palugu, Palugu, Dr. Mahmoud Baum, we have Palugu, 998 million dollars. They brought it to parliament around 9 p.m., wanted it passed at 11 p.m. I was a minority leader. I said, No way, this is not good enough. You are not allowing us to scrutinize it well. You are not allowing for value for money. Twelve million dollars have been spent. That twelve million can connect electricity or water to your village. Waste. 
waste mm -hmm. to corruption. I mean, so, but, but for some and people, the project has not taken off. You see, in Ghana, value for money, even the road we are constructing, who follows up? I mean, currently, uh, I was on the Yendi Road. Mm -hmm. I'm not happy with the quality of work of the contractor. I see some huge US dollars being mentioned. I'm measuring it against the final outcome of the road. Tamale Yendi, I'm not happy. I mean, but somebody must follow through when it came to parliament, uh -huh. Ministry of Roads, Highways, whoever is responsible. What was the nature of the road to be constructed? You know, even the size like this glass, you measure it, mm -hmm. somebody must go and find out whether Ghana is getting value for money for it. Many roads are constructed after two, three months, you see potholes on them. No, no that doubt about that. I mean, in, in, in the, in, you know, back to the subject of this hung parliament, I know you have mentioned issues that the minority stood their ground, uh, but, many, but, many but, but, but the Ghanaian people also think that the minority side has not been of its best in ensuring that we did our best I, I i don't talk about events uh, <laughs> behind me so i won't be able to discuss the minority leadership or parliament as it is but i say why, why not why can't I you i say i don't discuss those matters someday i would go into some of those uh, matters i'm only saying that parliament as an institution mm -hmm. have not served ghana well and i'm asking you so the minority of today. I say parliament as an institution. So don't narrow it to minority. Well, I mean, but without parliament. without without <laughs> the, the minority opposition, no. without the minority once opposition, parliament elect, will become a rubber you stamp. Elected, mm -hmm. You become a product of the state of Ghana okay. to serve Ghanaians, all Ghanaians, and to do good to all manner of Ghanaians. I am not personally satisfied with the oversight role of parliament. I've traveled the world. I mean, I've gone to learn from the National Assembly of France. I've learned from Singapore. I've learned from uh, Dhaka, Sri Lanka. I've learned from India. There is a problem with the oversight function, mm. and we need to work to strengthen it to guarantee value for money for the Ghanaian taxpayer, deepen scrutiny, and throw out executive excesses and waste Indeed. when they come to abuse the public purse in the name of protecting the purse. By that response, were you surprised when, you know, the speaker said that there were MPs who were there engaged in... And I say, I don't discuss a speaker or minority or majority. I discuss parliament... Are there, M are there MPs who are engaged I say, I in don't discuss destruction those, of the environment due to mining? Matters. That you directed to the maker of the statement. What we'll do now is take a quick break. When we come back, we would re engage on the subject of the battle for the North and then also touch on a few other issues to do with Parliament and some trending topics. Don't go away. Welcome back. If you just joined us, you've missed a bit of the conversation. But we're still here uh, with Haruna Idrisu, who is Member of Parliament for Tamale South constituency. He's also former minority uh, leader. Again, uh, you know, we, we move back to the subject of uh, the battle for the North. You seem to underestimate what Dr. Mahmoud Baumia could do as a son of the North as well. Because I know what Excellency John Dramani Mahama has done for the North. Uh, take the Tamale uh, International uh, Airport. The initiative was NDC John Dramani Mahama. That has eased traveling to Mecca and undertaking a major pillar of Islam, Hajj, considerably uh, with ease. So gratitude would be that of John Mahama and the NDC. If you take the Eastern Corridor Road, it was initiated by the NDC Excellency John Dramani Mahama. If you go to Bupe, uh, President Mahama in 2015 at the Gonjalan Youth Association meeting had declared uh, Bupe as Ghana's second industrial city. Mm -hmm. So what you need is an anchor partner, which he will do under his second term, to develop Bupe. Because you have that water source connecting up to Akusimbo. <laughs> if you develop it well, <laughs> we can have a decongestion of uh, the use of the road so that people can travel uh, via water in terms of that area. If you take Diamond Smen, which employs a lot of people that happen on the NDC, Eastern Corridor was done, even though some other road infrastructure got started, 
they have done their part. But I still think that generally John Mahama is more popular than Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Uh, but John Mahama, present for four years, asking for an additional four years. I mean, but would it be as there. easy as it's that? Uh, yeah. Nobody has said it's easy. Other than that, we all would have been sleeping. Nobody has said it's easy. Mm -hmm. It's a contest, competitive. And I'm saying that overall, all of them are from northern Ghana, northern Indeed. Region. Originally referred to as Northern Region, whether it's North East or uh, is uh, Savannah or it was originally Northern Region. And I'm not saying that it is not a competitive election. It is. But I'm saying that on the scale, uh, Excellency John Draman and Mahama should do better than Dr. Mahmoud Bami. I don't see Upper East changing. Mm -hmm. I don't see Upper West changing. Northern Region will still be won by John Dramani Mahama. He should win Northeast, uh, Northeast and Savannah Region would be where the contest will be key. But overall, Excellency John Dramani Mahama should be able to prevail. We should be able to get Salgan North uh, back. Mm -hmm. We should be able to Indeed. work and get uh, Damangu back. And uh, probably Daboya, and uh, not probably, uh, Obe is coming back to uh, parliament. One of our, uh, our, our brilliant uh, draft person. Mm -hmm. I mean, as minority leader, he was among few new MPs I observed when it came to legislation and uh, uh, undertaking bills. He did it with some finance and with some brilliance. I'm sure the people of Daboya would honor him with a return to parliament. We lost Daboya because of some geopolitics in that I mean, uh, particular speaking area. Of parliament, speaking yes. of parliament, what do you envision uh, the future of the NDC in parliament would look like? We we'll win a majority. We need a majority. And Ghanaians will give us a majority. So that President Mahama can reset the country undertake major constitutional reforms, major institutional reforms that guarantees an improved quality of life for the Ghanaian. Mm. So we need a majority and we are working at it. I, I want to talk about your relationship with the party and by extension the flag bearer. Is what we see contrived? No, 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 no. I've never had any issues with the flag bearer, never, never, ever. I mean, it's just people who uh, because of their own sometimes <laughs> future ambitions or ambitions, they see Harun Idris as a threat or a potential threat. Uh, they read, up, they are worried about the tomorrow that remains unknown to both me and them. I'm not worried and concerned about tomorrow. It's not mine. I'm a very good Muslim. Today is mine, and uh, tomorrow is his. Mm, to what his about grace. the party? So, uh, no, I've worked with all of them. I mean, uh, I work with Fifi Kwete even from his days at the NDC Youth uh, Forum. When the NDC lost power in 2001, we worked together very closely with the new self Husseini, Elvis Ankara, mm -hmm. Mustafa Plato, John Adams, and many of our colleagues. So we know each other. Except that I went to party headquarters much more earlier as national youth organizer. And uh, don't forget, I've had my battles in the NDC, mm -hmm. ran with uh, Jerry Rollis at the time, who uh, to his... Uh, of blessed memory. You remember when I ran for National Youth Organizer, there were issues, but I still won, I still prevailed. I say, saved the party. We fought and brought NDC back in power in 2008. I'm proud of my legacy and contribution to the growth and development of the NDC party. And the strengthening of its uh, youth wing, whether it's the teens or whether it's youth working committees, uh, together with my colleague then, Francis Siam, who decided to rock the boat and uh, fly out of the NDC mm. into some other political party, we started developing the structures of the party. And I'm very satisfied that today there is a stronger, resilient political party of the NDC. That was not the state of the NDC in 2001 when we decided to work and sacrifice for it. So I don't think that there is any uh, relationship. I mean... Uh, uh, I mean, but me, is, it, is it not the case that you hold a grudge, uh, you know, no, no, against, no, no. against the party for how you were removed I don't, in Parliament? I don't go to bed with guilt in my heart any day, and I don't hold grudge against any person. I'm MP for Tamale South. I've been former Minister for Communication, former Minister for Trade and Industry, former Minister for Employment. My record is there at every ministry I have served. Go to Ministry of Communication, you see the proud legacy of Haruna Idrisu. The data center 
10 years back, I thought of a data center and built a data center for Ghana at the Ministry of Communication. I built, actually initiated the building of the Ministry of Communication. I decentralized the National Communications Authority across Ghana. It was my policy decision mm -hmm. that they should be present. And I tried to build synergy and understanding between the National Media Commission and the NCA, between content and technical space, who controls what, who must work for what. You can go and look at it. I mean, so as it, Minister for Trade and uh -huh. Industry, you can go back. Um, I assisted President Mahama at the time with EDIF. Uh, much of the support he gave to pharmaceuticals came through that. I worked with Setepe to convert EDIF to become Ghana Exim Bank. Uh -huh. I was determined to get a Ghanaian to produce toothpick because it was embarrassing for me that we couldn't get a Ghanaian industrialist to be able to do that. We supported a number. And uh, I tried to uh, build a sugar estate because mm -hmm. I was convinced that that would reduce Ghana's uh, import bill to support President Mahama to succeed. You needed to reduce the import bill both for sugar and for rice. I was working on Commander Sugar Factory. I mean, so, so then is it, not, is it Pali, not curious? The Palace of Lugu, uh, Sugar and Cliff. We needed just $300 million. And if you got a sugar estate built, it could even give you 90 megawatts of electricity. Edna becomes a product where pharmaceutical companies could go up north if we got it uh, developed. So I, I, for me, about my role as minority leader, mm -hmm. at least nobody has questioned my integrity publicly. If they did, I will respond appropriately. If anybody did, I will respond well, appropriately. The chairman of the party <laughs> said that you were removed he, because he, you were not working with... The Speaker of Parliament. Maybe he is right. Maybe, maybe he was right. But someday, I will share my experience as minority leader with the Ghanaian people. The happenings in Parliament, mm -hmm. matters of uh, even the election of the Speaker, matters of e levy, the rejection of Ejapa, the rejection of uh, the budget, and uh, some personal. Uh, tribulations that one had to go through, but all in service of Ghana, service of God. Thank you for coming. My pleasure. If you just joined us, you missed that conversation, but remember that you can catch Hot Issues again on our YouTube and on our stream on Facebook and X as well. My guest is Haruna Idrisu, who is Member of Parliament for Tamale South Constituency. He's also a former minority leader. I am Kemeni Amano. We'll see you same time next week. Bye-bye.